Congressman Ron Paul is serving his 11th term in Congress from Texas. In 2008, he mounted a bid for the White House that galvanized an eclectic mix of supporters, including legions of young voters. He's also a best-selling author whose latest is called End the Fed. He joins us tonight from Capitol Hill. Congressman, nice to have you on the program. Thank you. Nice to be with you. Before I jump into the text, let me ask you if I can a couple of quick questions about Afghanistan since it's all over the news. Um, right. The White House has basically said that uh, we don't need to send more troops. Rahm Emanuel, I'm quoting here now, the chief of staff saying that we don't need to send more troops to Afghanistan until they have a legitimate and credible government. Two questions. Legitimate and credible government. One, what does that mean to you when you hear that, number one? And number two, even if that were the case, um, do we need to be sending more troops to Afghanistan? No, we don't need to be sending any more troops over there. We need to be bringing our troops home. And this whole idea of a legitimate government, there's no answer to that. Uh, th that was virtually impossible to arrange that. And who's going to make the decision? And one thing for sure is Karzai can't be legitimate because he is seen as a puppet for, of ours. And uh, I think this election uh, is a, a basically a fraud. A, a third of the votes that Karzai was supposed to have gotten uh, were ruled, uh, you know, illegal. So the, the, whole, the, the whole thing is preposterous. I mean, the whole notion of us being there is ridiculous. And the sooner we face up to this, the better off we're going to be. We don't have really the troops to send. We don't have the money to spend. And uh, it's just a part of a foreign policy that, I has, uh, that I've been talking about for many, many years, deeply flawed. And this is an example of what happens to it. You're in a place for uh, eight years, and then you're starting to decide, what are we here for? What's the purpose? And what's the end point? Who's the government? I mean, it, it is so foolish. I can't imagine why the people put up with this. And I just wish more people would send a message to their congressmen and said, we ought to deal with our problems here at home. Maybe we ought to be concentrating on getting better medical care than just finding another war to fight or continue or expand. So mm -hmm. I, I think the whole thing is foolish. Much is being said, as you well know today, about the fact that uh, President Karzai has agreed to a runoff election. You're not buying the spin on that? Oh, yeah, he, he probably will. But that means there's a lot of pressure put on. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's going to be eased out. You know, sometimes we turn on our puppets. Uh, remember back in Vietnam days when Diem was our puppet and then we had our CIA overthrow him and actually kill him. Uh, so who knows what's, what's exactly going on, but Karzai seems to be hard to defend. And uh, now that there's, you know, I'm sure we were rooting for him in the election, which means that we were involved in it. And uh, there was so much fraud, they got caught at it. So it's getting pretty hard to defend him. Uh, so uh, yes, there has to be an election, but I won't be surprised if uh, our government, uh, uh, you know, quits supporting him. He can't exist without our support. So if we withdraw support, but the big problem is, is they don't have anybody to replace them. I, 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 I'm about to ask you, I mean, some people believe that he's not perfect. I mean, I don't think the White House would tell you he's perfect, but they, they, the argument might be that he's the best of the rest. Yeah, well, I think uh, it's going to be hard to find anybody that will suit uh, the situation. And uh, whether you put in 20,000, 40,000 or 80,000, I think it's, it's not uh, worth the investment. So Did, go so, ahead. So, so, so what should the president do then with these, this tough decision on Afghanistan? What should he do? I think he should come home and say that uh, we did our best. We uh, took care of the Al Qaeda. They don't exist there. And uh, and uh, the 300 that w did exist there, they're all dead or gone. And that uh, we ought to allow the Afghans to decide what kind of government they want. And they don't want a centralized government. They want they want tribalism. And we just can't change them. People have been trying to do that for centuries. And, and it's just uh, not going to happen. One, so one last I, question. I would say... No, I'm sorry. One last question before I go to your book. Um, the argument, though, as you well know, um, is that if the U.S. were to pull out of Afghanistan or pull out of Iraq, you pull out of that region, the argument is that the whole region collapses and the apocalypse happens if you take Ron Paul's advice and just pull out. Well, I think staying there is going to cause more trouble. I, I think uh, the fact that we've been there for eight years and destabilized the area, uh, Afghanistan isn't stable, but now Pakistan's not stable. Now we're, you know, sending our drones over there and innocent people are getting killed. And we're pretty soon going to think about what we have to do to stabilize and get control of the weapons of Pakistan. At the same time, they're planning on expanding, uh, you know, the uh, efforts to 
to overthrow the government in, in, in Iran. Uh, they're coming up with real strong sanctions against the Iranians, and, and that's not going to help us. Uh, it's, it's just uh, an endless task to continue to try to nation build and police the world. We weren't meant to do that, and we can't afford it any longer. Mm. And it all has you know, ramifications and, and blowback phenomenons that will be hurtful to us. I think it's a real threat to our national security to be overly involved in mm. that area. As a, it's, it's a great segue to this book that you've written now called In the Fed, already on the New York Times bestseller list, I might add. Um, one listens to your answers now in this conversation about Afghanistan. Uh, one prepares to go into a conversation now with you about this new book called End the Fed. One gets the impression that Ron Paul, although a member of Congress, doesn't trust government. Is that a fair assessment? I don't trust the, uh, I wouldn't say all government at all times, but I would say that uh, most Americans, including myself, don't fully trust that the government's taking very good care of us. They don't have a good foreign policy. And there's something very untrustworthy about our monetary system. Very, very untrustworthy and very unfair that it takes care of Wall Street at the same time. It hurts the people because they end up with the inflation. They end up with the unemployment. They end up with losing their houses. And yet the Federal Reserve behind the scenes in secret can create trillions of dollars and bail out companies like Goldman Sachs. They can deal with world banks uh, around, you know, at world central banks and other governments. And we're not even allowed to know that Congress is so derelict in their responsibility. And this is why I, of course, want an audit of the Fed. But indeed, what we'll eventually have to have is ending the Fed because they're, they're going to destroy our money. We're in the process of doing that. They, they set the stage for destroying the financial system and that has collapsed. But now they're just embarking on endless inflation, double the money supply, run up the debt and spend and not even worry about it. We'll print the money if we need it. That is a devastation to the average person and it will. And in, in countries where it gets out of control, the middle class gets wiped out. And that's what I'm afraid could happen here. You know, there are those who are watching right now, no doubt, who will say that you got it all wrong, that not only should the Fed not be ended, uh, were we to do something like that, the timing could not be worse because it is the Fed and it's Congress who you're saying was derelict in their duty, who put the money, pumped the money back into Wall Street that turned this, turned this situation around. Now they're celebrating on Wall Street and passing out mm -hmm. bonuses. And of course, the line is that jobs are always the last thing to come around. That's the last indicator. But how do you respond to those who say that this would be a bad idea, the wrong time for this idea, and were it not for us pumping money into Wall Street, the economy might not be making a turn right about now? Well, there's a half truth there. The TARP funds did go there to a large degree, and we did prop up a lot of those businesses. Of course, that's why some politicians go to go to Wall Street to raise money for the political uh, campaigns. But uh, the uh, the Federal Reserve pumps in trillions, mm -hmm. and we're not even allowed to know. TARP funds, people caught on, and they demanded from Congress, what's going on here? Why don't you find out? What, what Are there any strings attached? So as bad as the TARP funds are and as bad as what the Congress has done, the Federal Reserve is that much worse. Now, the answer to the other question about, you know, it could be chaotic getting rid of the Fed. But if you read my book carefully, and I've talked about this for many, many years, about a transition, even in the foreign policy, everything I, I talk about, how you get from from one step to the next stage. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I suggest here is not abolishing the Federal Reserve tomorrow, but legalizing uh, some competition against the Federal Reserve, legalize the Constitution, legalize sound money. Uh, parallel currencies are, are operating all the time around the world. What, 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 in, what would competition against the Federal Reserve look like? You know, describe that for me. Well, gold, gold coins and gold savings accounts could be used. And today, if you use gold and silver as legal tender, you go to jail. And yet the law and the Constitution said only gold and silver can be legal tender. But the, uh, the uh, courts always rule that the only legal tender is what the IRS said, and that's Federal Reserve notes. But there's no law that says Federal Reserve notes uh, are dollars. And uh, so it's total chaos. And that's why you have a financial system in chaos. But you can legalize competition. For instance, in Mexico, the middle class and the poor have been wiped out several times because their peso goes to zero and all their money becomes worthless. But in Mexico now, if you want to save, you can put it in silver and the, the, and the accounts 
ounce will be backed by silver, which means that you're not going to lose. The lower the peso goes, the higher your silver prices go up. You could do that in this country and you could have a transition. And if you wanted to use Federal Reserve notes, you could, but other people could get paid for and, and make payments. And with the computer age, this is no big problem. I mean, if you go to Mexico, you can translate dollars into pesos uh, mm. very, very easily. So it, it could be done in, rather than looking for chaos and closing down the system. It, but if you continue to do what we're doing now, you are going to have chaos because you're going to have a war, uh, runaway inflation, destruction of the dollar. Now that is real chaos, go, not what I'm suggesting.